I pity the fool cell. Hey guys, it's Matt with Bleep and Jeep, and today we're going to be talking about and building this fuel cell. So stay tuned. Okay, so what is a fuel cell? Well, a fuel cell is just another word for a gas tank, but it's more of an aftermarket gas tank, and it's built more around safety. Now there's different kinds of fuel cells. One would be a hard plastic fuel cell, one would be an aluminum, like this one here, and then there's the bladder type, which usually has a bladder inside of a steel container. So a fuel cell is mainly for racing applications. They're safer than a standard gas tank that you would get on, say, a stock vehicle. And the reason for that is the safety features that they have. Now there's different safety features for different applications. Usually if, when you're talking about a fuel cell you're talking about for racing applications. Uh, in my application we're talking about rock crawling and rock crawling is a little bit different than racing because you're not so much concerned about the safety although you still want a safe fuel cell but the reason that most rock, um, that most rock crawlers get a fuel cell is to get the fuel tank up uh, from the standard position which would be underneath uh, right on top of the axle or in the back or somewhere below the vehicle and you want to get it up out of the way from the rocks so to do that usually you have to have a different type of different shape of fuel cell to fit it somewhere up inside the vehicle so let's talk about the safety mechanisms of a fuel cell normally they are made to take an impact and keep you safer in the event of a crash what you don't want is your uh, your fuel cell or your gas tank to split open and all that fuel go flying around inside your vehicle that would be really bad so normally like on a, um, a race car what they have is a bladder it's like a rubber bladder inside that is foam so the foam even though it's completely taking up the entire bladder it has these air pockets little tiny air pockets and so it only takes up about two to three percent of the entire volume and the gas still flows inside of that foam now the foam does several things it keeps it from sloshing around when you're going around turns things like that and it keeps it from 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 exploding and going all over whenever you're in an accident or a wreck so that's the bladder style and the foam now a lot of off-road racers or off-road rock crawlers i should say don't like the foam because it tends to break down over time now if you're racing and you're constantly you know screwing with your vehicle every month you're going to be removing that foam and replacing it about once a year in a rock crawler like this it may sit for several months and not see the trail or the outside of the garage and people don't tend to use foam for something like like a play toy because it just breaks down too quickly and you don't want to have to be messing with it all the time so in that case there's another solution instead of foam you're going to use baffles um, now they make different types of baffles uh, in this case um, we made this tank and so if you make it yourself you might as well be installing baffles on the inside but most tanks that you buy are going to be pre-made with no baffles and in that case you can install aftermarket baffles they actually make um, wiffle balls some people use wiffle balls uh, but you have to make sure to get the right type of wiffle ball so it doesn't uh, destroy your gas and, and uh, destroy the gas tank by by coming apart but uh, there's another aftermarket company that makes something kind of like a wiffle ball but it's like a cylindrical shape you can stick that down in there and it just keeps the fuel from sloshing around if you think about it gasoline weighs six pounds per gallon so if you do the math on an 18 gallon tank that's a hundred and eight pounds of material sloshing around in there that's like 12 bowling balls so imagine that you have 12 bowling balls inside of this tank and you're hitting uh, the brakes and all those bowling balls come forward and slam into the inside of the tank now that's why you need baffles this tank has baffles that separate here here and here so that there's five separate compartments what that does is basically keep those bowling balls in place so that they can't slosh around and hit the inside of the tank when you build a tank without any sort of baffles eventually it's going to crack from the inside because of all that weight slamming around every time that you go up or down an incline or around a corner okay so let's talk about the shape of the tank a perfect 
tank would probably be a very tall cylindrical tank so that as the fuel runs out it still goes down to the bottom and you have a pickup down in the bottom. A lot of tanks aren't shaped like that though and that's because of the, the way that they need to fit inside the vehicle. For one you want your center of gravity to be very low so you want to try to get all that weight down as low as possible. Now this tank was uh, we custom built this for the uh, crawler here in a trapezoidal kind of shape and what we did was put a sump down in the bottom here and the reason for that is uh, I needed this tank to be very flat because for one I wanted storage space in here but it also needed to be this trapezoidal shape because of the way the rear end is, uh, is shaped. So what I did was I, I, I did what they call a sump. So this is the fuel uh, sending unit and pump all in one and it's exactly nine inches tall. So what I needed was a nine inch tall tank. But I didn't want it to be nine inches tall uh, for one because it would be so flat that when you go, let's say you go downhill like this, this is the front of the tank, you go downhill all that all that gasoline is going to go towards the front of the tank and you're going to starve your tank for fuel. So in this case I put in a sump so that no matter how steep you are that gasoline is going to be trapped inside this sump. Now you can uh, you can accommodate that in several different ways. You can do the baffles like we said the baffles are going to slow down the fuel from going to the front. You can also install pickups in different locations so you might can have four pickups uh, on all four corners of a tank. You could also have pickups just on two corners so that when you're going around turns all that gasoline goes over to one side, you don't starve for fuel because you have pickups on both locations. Um, I think this is the best of both worlds right here though because the sump is so deep that I would have to be on a steep, steep incline for probably 30 minutes or more to starve that out of fuel even at its emptiest uh, setting. So this is, uh, it's hard to calculate, but this is about probably 17 gallons uh, in this tank. So it's, it's fairly large and it's fairly compact and it'll still allow me storage space uh, above the tank. Blah 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 blah. Okay so let's take a look at some of the fittings that you'll need on a fuel tank. Um, there's only a handful of them. You need the fill so this is just like your gas tank cap right there where you put the, the gas in. Um, you need a vent of some sort. The gas is going to expand and contract and uh, you know if you've ever seen one of those uh, red gas cans when it gets hot it doesn't have a vent it'll expand like a balloon you don't want that happening to your tank so what you do is you have a vent and that's right here in this case and in most cases on a fuel cell you'll want a rollover valve which is this it's basically a ball valve in there if this tank goes upside down the ball valve closes and keeps the fuel from coming out then it goes to a line right here doesn't have to go to a line but uh, it's a better option and that line gets routed in around the cage in a way that in any direction the fuel is not going to spill out that's that's a whole other video right there just on how to route that line but uh, basically that's your ball valve and uh, a line for the vent so the next thing is your outlet you need to have uh, the, the fuel come out somehow and that for me is right here um, if you have an external pump, usually your outlet would be on the bottom, but in this case um, I've got a pump that sits inside the tank and pumps from the inside, it pumps out here, and I've also got a sending unit in there, and a sending unit is tell, just tells you how much fuel you have left, so I've got some wires coming out for the sending unit, and this is a, a ring, it's an aftermarket ring that allows me to use the stock fuel pump on a fuel cell. So that just gets bolted or welded on. We chose to uh, cut the holes off, weld that on, and then that uh, whole fuel pump and sending unit sits down inside there and locks down with this ring. All right, there's only one more, and that is the return. Let me turn this around and show you that. Okay, so right here, this is your return. Now there's two different types of systems, a uh, return and a return less. So this one is the return, and what that does is um, your fuel is sent to your fuel rail to the pressure regulator that regulates the pressure. 
if there's any gas that's not used at the fuel rail, it sends it back to the return and back into the tank and it gets recycled again. Now some systems do not have a return, in which case all the fuel sent gets used. In that case, there is a pressure valve at the pump, which only sends the necessary fuel to the engine and not any more. Now the one thing about the return, it either needs to come in inside the fuel, like towards the bottom, or if it comes in the top, you should have a line running down into the fuel, because if you just put that into the top and it um, comes and falls down into the fuel, what that does will create bubbles, and then that will get in your fuel line and have you'll have air bubbles in your fuel line, and that is not good. So one more thing that I wanted to mention was that uh, I had my I designed this fuel cell and then I had my buddy come over and help me weld this up because I know nothing about aluminum TIG welding so thank you to Brad for coming over and helping and Jeremy helped out too as well but uh, normally all of these fittings let's say if you're gonna buy a tank they would all be on a ring in the middle somewhere if you're building your own tank you can put them anywhere you like which is nice but uh, for the most part they would be in the center all in one spot and you'd have a section that would come out and, and bolt back in. So uh, all of the fittings on a fuel cell like this are typically AN fittings, Army, Navy standard fittings, and uh, that's what these are. So keep that in mind when you're looking at fuel cells or buying parts for your fuel cell. You'll also want to ground the fuel cell too. You don't want uh, sparks building up, so you want to make sure that's grounded to your chassis somewhere. So in a nutshell, that's a fuel cell. I appreciate you guys for watching. I'm going to leave you with a little bit of video footage of this sucker being welded up. It's not completely finished because we ran out of welding gas, but uh, we're almost done. And I do have a lot of videos of uh, this crawler back here. This fuel cell is going into this uh, Jeep back here, which I am building on this channel. So if you're interested in seeing more about that, please do subscribe and uh, you can see a lot more videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So I appreciate you watching. Thanks a lot. We'll see you next time.